Hello again. This video is going to show us how to return, how to create and return arrays from functions. And this gets a little bit trickier because the same rule still applies. So we still have uh, the rule like before that remember when in terms of passing arrays into functions that we don't really pass a whole array, we just pass a pointer. Um, the same thing applies here is that we return just a pointer to uh, an array. And so the question is, how can we actually create an array in a function if we're only able to p return a pointer to it? And the key is that we have to use heap allocation in the function. We must. Uh, you don't have any choice about this. It's not like when you're allocating arrays in main, you can use stack or heap based arrays, depending on some of those things we talked about, like, is it going to be really big? Or how do you want to deal with it? Um, in this case, you must use heap allocation. And to understand that, I want to look at a small picture. So just a reminder, this is the program we were just working on from the last video. So if you forgot about that, you might go check it out again. But we have we created two small functions and two arrays. A1 is a stack-based array and A2 is a heap-based array. And so what I wanna do is look at what is the stack and heap look like when we use those functions right here. Uh, so we'll draw a little picture of the stack and the heap and how they kind of relate to each other. So on the left-hand side, I'm gonna have the stack and the stack always starts with main at the bottom and what we draw, what we're drawing here is like the variables that are in scope of that one. Um, so there's a number of variables here. I'm not going to draw all of them, but what's important is that A1 is a stack-based array. That means that the contents of A1 are really inside the the function call stack for the main function. So whatever this had, I think 10, 15, 20, 30. Okay, so the contents of A1 are right here. What about for A2? Well, A2 is a pointer type and it was allocated using calc. So just a reminder, here's the place where we get A2. So A2 is a pointer to an int. It's really a pointer to the beginning of an array. And um, how we got that was using this um, standard library call for calc that asked the operating system to go get some memory for us. And so where that exists is in this other part of memory that I'm gonna just draw over here, that's called the heap. And so what happens is, let's say we made this array of length five. Of course, it depends on what the user typed in. Then A2 is a pointer, which we draw like this. It's a pointer to the beginning of this space that's somewhere out in the heap. And then it has some contents in there. I'll just put one, two, three, four, five. It depends on what the user types in. And see how this the place where this exists in memory now makes a big difference with how this is going to work with functions. Um, but for functions that are just taking arrays as arguments, it it won't make that much of a difference. Uh, so let's check out what happens when we call add one. If we call add one with a one, then the add one function has just these two parameters, which is data and size. And data is always a pointer, and size is always just a regular int. So if we called add one with a1, then that would have um, its data pointer and the size. We know the size in this case is going to be four. What's this data pointer? Well, it's just going to be pointing to the first element of the array a1. And so then we would add one to everything there. So this function would modify this to 11, 16, 21, and 31. Okay. And now when that function is done, it gets popped off the stack. So that means that that's going to go away and we're back into main. And uh, if I call add one with a2, we'll see that from the add one functions perspective, Everything is working exactly the same, even though the data that it's dealing with, so the size will be five, and the data is actually out here on the heap. And so it would add one to everything here, so change this to two, three, four, five, and six. 
And so from the perspective of this function, it doesn't matter where that array lives because it just has a pointer to, it could be something below it in the stack or something over out here in the heap. Doesn't matter either way. And then when this function returns, that gets popped off the stack and we go back to main. No problem. Okay, so, but now what I want you to think about is what about returning an array from a function? So inside, now imagine we had a function that's supposed to create an array. Well, now you can hopefully see why it has to create it on the heap. Because once that function returns, so if we have a function here that's supposed to create an array, we can't create the array in this space in the stack because then when the function returns, that stack space goes away and now it's like the array is gone, the thing that you were trying to return. But if we create it out in the heap, then it'll stay there until it gets deallocated with free. And so that's going to be the key um, to create stuff over here. And let's see how we could do that. What I'm going to do is just modify our existing program so that it does this stuff of getting the uh, elements for A2, that it's going to do all this in a function. So let's think about the, so this is going to read in elements and create a new array. So what's it going to return? It's going to return a pointer. And what information does it need? There's a couple different ways you could write this, but I'm going to have it where the size is known in advance. So it's going to read in that many elements and create an array of that proper size and then return a pointer to that. Okay, so we'll still need to read in A2 size right here, but then instead of all of this, we're going to put all of this part in its own function. So we will just be able to say int a2 equals read in um, of that size. Okay, so let's actually write the function now. First thing we wanna do here is we need to allocate. And again, you might be tempted to say like array of size that'll work within the function but then if we try to return that it doesn't make sense because that this storage will be gone as soon as the function finishes executing so instead we'll create the array with calic okay and then the rest of what we do will be really the same as uh what we had before um we don't know the name of it anymore, so we'll just say elements and then read in everything into that array. Then finally, the last thing will be to just return that pointer. So this is a function now that actually creates a new array, but it creates it out in the heap and fills it in with data so that when it returns the pointer to that array, the, the um, the data is still there, it still exists because it was created out in the heap, not in any part of any function. Let's check, make sure it works. So let's uh, go with a bigger size, five, six, seven, eight. And that seems to work pretty well. And uh, just as a little extra challenge to you, I'll leave you with the question of what if we also wanted to put this stuff in the function as well? And uh, the hint to what's gonna be a challenge there is that if I also wanted to read in the size as part of this function, now the function has to actually somehow return two things. It has to return a pointer, and it also has to return this size that it read in. And so that means that one of those things, if you think back to what we learned in the previous unit about functions, when we when we have like two different things that we're trying to return from a function, then we have to pass in a pointer to one of them. Um, so in that case, you might want to pass in a pointer to the size and have the function kind of fill that in. Uh, and that can get a little bit tricky. The reason why it can get tricky is because this uh, now would take in a pointer, but that pointer would just represent a single value, 
not an entire array. So that's a, a little challenge I'll leave to you of how you can try to put this also as a like an additional parameter for the read-in to also read in the science. And I think if you can get that right, then you have a good understanding of functions with arrays.